might get into it at some stage if there's a, a bit more time going into the more mechanical processes of it. Like I say, it is time consuming. Please don't make any mistake about that. It's not something we just sit down and say, oh, we'll just knock out a podcast in a couple of hours. And for me, living in Australia with so much action happening in North America, or indeed in the UK, it means my alarm goes off at 4 o'clock in the morning. I get my Let's talk about that a little bit, because yeah. one of the big things you've been involved with is the AVN in Australia. Yes, yeah. See that slide that's been up there for all the stuff? <laughs> the fight against them. I can't see it. I can't. It's right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah so we can't see that. Yeah. Oh, it's not visible. It absolutely that. should be out. Of You're not tall enough. We're all. <laughs> yeah, okay, let, let, let's cover that. Yeah. What we're going to be talking about is what, in, in the case of the Skeptic Zone, one of the major things that we've been following or doing for years and years and years, probably ever since the Skeptic Zone began, the Australian Vaccination Network, or the ABM. No, they're not what you would think they are based on that name. Though. Not what you think they are. Um, they were founded in uh, 1994 under the name of the Vaccination Awareness Network by a certain Meryl Dory who is right there. <laughs> Can we have that moved down a yeah, couple of feet? That, that would be really cool. Because they didn't put up sort of naughty pictures of me and I won't be up there. <laughs> it's that picture, Jay, it's going to come back. That's good. Well, that's great. There you go. So that's Meryl Dory. She's, she's American, actually. Yeah, she's, she's, from, she's one of ours. And we, yeah. we exported her to like Cause havoc somewhere yeah, else. You, you send us Meryl Dory and we send you Ken Hang. Yeah. yeah. Somehow, yeah. we're good that Jane way. McCarthy <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. the balance there somewhere. So their, their, their basic underpinning, their philosophy is a deep mistrust of pharmaceutical drugs and they embrace what they conceive or think to be natural health and healing, getting back to nature. It's, absolutely intertwined with the classic anti-government conspiracy theories, one world government, all this sort of thinking. Now the group was known, I'm not exactly sure when they changed their name to the Australian Vaccination Network, but, um, but it's been like, it's been their name for many years until complaints from uh, people like the skeptics and, and other groups, uh, they changed their name, they were forced to by the law, the New South Wales, the state I live in, the uh, Office of Fair Trading, which they come under this, ordered to change their name because it was misleading. I mean, I can't set up a, a pizza shop and call it a hot dog shop, if you know what I mean. I'm saying pizza, not hot they was They were pushing anti-vaccination message, pretending to be pushing general information about vaccination. So what, what people, young mothers, young fathers, were, were looking up this information, saw Australian Vaccination Network and thought that's what the advice, they were getting good advice. So they came up with all sorts of variations and the final name that they chose and was accepted by the government was, which they are now known as, the Australian Vaccination Skeptics Network. So they stole, they stole our word too. Well, it's a deep, a big dig at the Australian skeptics yeah. because of our constant fight and I, I might even say maybe even the skeptic zone because we've been the, one of the voice pieces for the fight. Uh, and a couple of years before this, Meryl and her friends set up a website and a URL called The Real Australian Skeptics. I don't have that. Uh, the good. <laughs> you can look that up, and it's 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 just it's like Scientology have these front pages that are, don't look yes. like they're Scientology, um, and then it rants on about the fact that they're the real Australian skeptics, and these other people who call themselves skeptics are fake or pseudo skeptics. We get that all the time yeah. in the skeptical industry. Oh, yeah. People think oh, yeah. that we're not real skeptics because we don't agree with them. Basically. How many times have any of us been called the pseudo skeptics? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It happens all the time. It's this equation that caused me to want to do a skeptic show. I know. It, it, when, when you see um, conspiracy nuts calling themselves skeptics, skeptics. I, know. I realized we need more voices out there who understand what real scientific skepticism right. is. Is it Was the line 11 truthers took over skeptic skeptic name? Yeah. yeah. We've heard it all. So, where the, um, the Skeptic Zone podcast comes into this, uh, and I'm sure most of you will certainly be familiar with the name of Dr. Rachel, Dr. Rachel Dunlop, 
who's a reporter on the Skeptic Zone, who's on sort of on hiatus at the moment because she's uh, first and foremost, she's a research scientist, a biologist, and she's working at the moment in Wyoming. And if you follow her on Facebook or Twitter, she takes the most breathtaking photographs of, of the nature of birds she's and mountains. Yeah. <laughs> she's a cheating. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in cheating. Wyoming, it's just out every window. She's so Dr. Rachie has now become a very accomplished photographer. And if you don't follow uh, Dr. Rachie, I think it's just Dr. Rachie on Twitter, or you can look her up on she's Facebook. She's won awards for her. Yeah, yeah. she's won awards. Yeah, she, it's fact, beautiful photography. But I digress. In the years before she went out uh, to, to come to the States to do her, her work, and she was a regular reporter on the Skeptic Zone with her report, Dr. Rachie Reports, a lot of those reports uh, were bringing our audience up to date on the latest goings on with the Australian Vaccination Network. Court cases, what they're doing, what their blogs are saying, the people involved. It was extensive and it's a great record which of course is still there to this day. You can Google Dr. Rachie reports and she would often put those reports up on her own blog which is also the, the blog of the Skeptics and podcast called The Skeptics Book of Poo Poo. <laughs> she has the best blog name ever. There's a story behind that too. Uh, and and it was just really important to get to, to let our listeners know how we were doing in this fight against these anti-vaccination people in Australia. And I think it inspired a lot of people around the world. She was getting a lot of correspondence and she became widely hated, of course, by the anti-vaxxers, which is a good thing because yeah. it was a myth that she was doing well. If, 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 you're, if, you're, if you're a skeptic and you become hated for what you're talking about, that means you're doing your job. Yeah, yeah, and, and she's on the bad list. Uh, of the anti-vaxxers big time. They refer to her by name often. Um, they referred to me once as a musketeer only evil. <laughs> you saying? I, I, that's got to be a t-shirt, right? <laughs> I don't know you saying. That's why we're the eating babies. Yeah. Yeah. You eat babies, I'm a musketeer only evil. Can you get bread <laughs> So since uh, Dr. Rachie is more or less on a hiatus at the moment because her research is so important, she does work into um, motor neuron disease and all this sort of stuff, so all power to her, it's just fantastic. And the fact that she was on the skeptic zone doing regular reports for years and years is a huge uh, testament to her. I have so much respect for Dr. Rachie on, on many levels. Now we have, um, I have a relatively new reporter, Heidi Robertson, who lives up in the north coast area of my state, New South Wales. And you might have heard of places like Byron Bay. It's a very famous uh, area in Australia for sun and surf and all the rest of it. But that whole north coast area was very uh, famous in the early 70s. It was the center of the hippie culture. All the people who dropped out of society and took, embraced that so lifestyle. Berkeley. It's, your, it's your Berkeley. Sort of, yeah, but it's very regional. It's very in the countryside. They all went up to this north coast area of New South Wales um, and they've got big, still to this day there's a big hippie contingent there. As a result of the, anti, uh, the Australian Vaccination Network being centred in the same area and this hippie culture generally, the, the little town there where I grew up as a matter of fact, just as an aside, called Mullumbimby, that's a great name, has the lowest vaccination rate in Australia under 50% of kids in wow. this little town and their region are, are vaccinated. Under 50%. It's appalling. So Heidi is our new reporter. Uh, her, her reports go under the, uh, the banner of the Raw Skeptic Report. Everyone, I like to have little hooks. Everyone has their own theme music. People get them familiar with it. It's, it's all part of production, showbiz in a sort of a way. But your show is probably mine. We're, we're magazine shows. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So when the, the theme music comes up for Dr. H or Heidi, you know what's coming and main art and all that sort of stuff. So she and her friends also started a group called the Northern Rivers. That's the name of the, the region, the Northern Rivers, because of the, the rivers up there. The Northern Re Re uh, Rivers Vaccination Supporters. And they're doing tremendous work. They leave flyers and leaflets around and, and give good information. And they're, of course, in that area, in the heartland of the area, they're widely despised and hated. They get in the newspaper, they get on national TV. It's just fantastic. It's brilliant what they're doing. So I'm so pleased that Heidi Robinson is a, now a reporter for my show. 
and she reports on sort of taken up where Dr. Rachi has left off for the moment, but also she does uh, reports about first aid because she's a, um, a paramedic. She runs first aid courses, and one of her more recent reports on the show, a couple of, or maybe a month or two back, was on all the quack cures for burns, including homeopathy, uh, which is just insanely yeah. dangerous. And indeed, the foremost, one of the foremost homeopathy groups in Australia called Homeopathy Plus, who were being, who 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 were, were sued by the government and lost, which is a good thing. Recently, put out a newsletter linking to a story encouraging people to use hot water to treat burns. Well, that makes sense, though. And, they're, and, they're, and, they're say, and she said, and to the skeptic, if people ask you about this or they complain, say to the skeptics, well, what randomized controlled double blind trials have you seen using hot water and cold water on burns? <laughs> you were their argument. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> So, well, what randomized controls have you seen, uh, blind, double blind tests have you seen using uh, uh, parachutes, parachutes versus yes. shovels in the parachute backpack or something like that? <laughs> you know, Richard, the, the thing that impresses me so much about the Australian skeptics community, you, know, you have a podcast, and the podcast started a other activism. Like you're doing the like yeah. real world, you're not just popularizing science and educating people, the, the work that you guys have accomplished, particularly with the ABN, it's astounding. The legwork, the, the, everything that you had to do off the podcast to get all that That's done. That's true. That's true. Also, also well, the, other, the thing you. is, they had the one advantage where your laws in your country allowed you to do things that we can't do here. Th that's true, uh, but I must say I am very careful. I am so careful. I know you are too, Steve, of course. And we, we all are. Not careful enough. Not careful enough. enough. <laughs> because um, I, I need to dedicate my time and resources to find, getting reports, going on uh, investigations, collecting all this stuff. If, if some black or, or other was to do to me what would happen to you guys, I think I would have to fold the show because I couldn't, I couldn't fight those, all those battles. It, it would be too difficult. So I'm very, very... Uh, very careful indeed, but yeah, you think, thanks, Jay, because it does reach a lot of people, and I get a lot of feedback from it. Uh, it inspired other people to start podcasts, which is like, delighted. That's pretty cool. Uh, all in all, it, it's a pretty satisfying thing, except sometimes on a, sat on a Sunday afternoon when I haven't got the show together, and I know I've got to sit down for the next five hours and just do nothing else except put shows in. Or the alarm goes off at 3 o'clock in the morning because that's when the guy in the UK or the, the woman in America is awake, ready for me to interview them. Then it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I think we all have that problem. But apart from that, it's, 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 it's a buzz. It's, it really is. It's something special, isn't it? Yeah.